to you by Kellogg's. Kellogg's cereals. The best to you each morning from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. Thank you. And now, a gentleman who has spent the entire weekend underwater, the distinguished actor, Martin Gable. On my left, a girl who's spending these hot summer days working on a book for the man on her left, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you. And the man on my left, who just spent a hard, hot, humid day splashing at a pool in Mount Kisco, Bennett Surf. Here's our famous panel moderator, the master of the misleading hint, John Charles Daly. Bennett's, uh, let me off easy tonight. Must be getting hot outside or something. <laughs> 96. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to What's My Line. And Martin, it's always a joy to see you on the panel, sir. Great pleasure for me, John. Thank Have you. some, uh, fine occupations. I take very interesting occupations for you tonight. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program and we'll meet our first challenger. And now to meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in please? Irene Ammons, right? Mm -hmm. Miss or Mrs. Ammons? It's Miss. Miss Ammons. Where are you from? I'm from Nampa, Idaho. Nampa? Nampa. Where is that? About 20 miles uh, west of Boise. Oh, fine. That's lovely country that you come from. Nice to have you with us. May I present our panel, Miss Ammons? How do you do? Can you join me over here, please? You know how we keep score, Miss Ammons? Yes, I do. Fine. In that event, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. We can tell you that Miss Ammons is salaried and deals in a service. And I think we ought to put uh, you to work immediately, Martin. Mr. Gable. I'm very flattered, John, as you start with me. I know you reserve it for the real pros here. <laughs> Miss Ammons, Idaho is one of our great farming states. Has your work anything to do with farming? No. One down and there <laughs> you go, Miss Gilgallum. Uh, do you work indoors, Miss Ammons? Yes. Uh, do you wear ordinary clothes as opposed to some sort of uniform or protective co covering? No. Small conference. <laughs> Figured. On my time. <laughs> Your question was, does Miss Hammonds wear ordinary clothes uh, instead of some kind of a uniform? Huh? That's right. Yes. You do wear ordinary clothes instead yes. of some sort of uniform. In other words, if, if I, if you walked in in your working clothes, that wouldn't tell me a thing, would no. it? No. Okay. Um, do you deal with people, uh, human beings in your work? Yes. Men as well as women? Yes. Do you deal more with one sex than the other? Yes. Is it the male sex? If I may interject here, and if I'm not being fair, you tell me, I think it's true that as a matter of happenstance, Miss Ammons works, tends to work more with one sex than another, but working with both, it is, is not terribly important whether it's one or the other. I see. Uh, do you do a job that could be done by a man? Yes. Is it very frequently done by a man? 
I think so, yes. Mm -hmm. Does it involve uh, any manual skill? No. no. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Ammons, you know, they say about Idaho, Boise will be Boise. You know that old expression. <laughs> uh, I have, um, earlier this evening, I took note of the heat. You'll all forgive. <laughs> Does the, uh, you, you are salaried, Miss Ammons. Do you work for a non-profit making organization? Yes. Might it be some kind of government work that you do? Either national, state, or city? In other words, is Miss Ammon's employer either uh, federal? Uh, some kind of a federal state or, or state or civic yes. body. Mm -hmm. Would it be national? No. No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Uh, in, your, <clears throat> in your work for the government, uh, do people come to you for your service? Yes. Uh, do you have anything whatsoever to do with licensing of any kind? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Gable. Have you anything to do with the police department? Yes, sometimes. In your work, is your service uh, under the uh, sponsorship of the police, using that term in its broadest sense, as John would say? No. No. Not under the sponsorship of the police. And here we have direct reference to the entity which specifically is the employer in this instance of Miss Ammons. Do five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Miss Ammons, do you have anything to do with the law? Yes. Are you a lawyer? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Surf. Miss Ammons, does your work ever bring you into either courthouses or pri prisons? Yes. Does it bring you into courthouses sometimes? Yes. Does it also bring you into prisons sometimes? Prisons. Does it bring well, you into I said both sometimes. at the start. Seldom. Seldom it could. I would say, it Bennett, could. to be fair, it could, but it would, it would be the rare rather than the usual occurrence, right? right? Have you anything to do with serving summonses or raising bail for people? No. Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. Is detecting any part of your work, detecting something? Yes. You, um, um, would it be beneficial to you in your job uh, to um, uh, know anything about fingerprinting? No. No, I wouldn't think so, Ali. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Gable. Could your work be described as uh, investigation? It could be. Uh, are you uh, an investigator? That was <laughs> clever. <laughs> Specifically as such, no. There is investigator. Well, there's some investigation. Investigatory, <laughs> John. I knew I'd get you one day. Investigatory work done, but the, not an investigator as such. All right, nine down and one to go, Miss Kilgar. Miss Ammons, may I assume that you are not either a magistrate or any kind of judge? Yes. Uh, when your work brings you into court, is it as a result of work that you have previously done somewhere else? No, I should hope it never would. <laughs> no, I would you think not. But the, well, she uh, be a lawyer. No, I, you're, all, you're very close to it, but actually Miss Ammons is a probation officer for the oh. court of Kenyon County oh, in, no. in Idaho. And even more than that, she's recently chosen Miss Idaho for the Miss America contest. That's more and you can see how that is. <laughs> Miss, the Miss America contest is in September now. Miss Arlene is going is going to be chosen Miss Universe next Saturday. <laughs> I'm going to be chosen Miss what? Miss Universe <laughs> next Saturday. I'm the Queen Mother. I'm the host. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would just say looking at television next Saturday night, there won't be nobody there prettier than you are. Oh, yes, there will, but you're sweet, John. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Miss Ammons, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed your visit with us, and needless to say, we look forward to you, uh, your participation in Miss America. Wish you lots thank of luck. Thank you very nice much. Nice to have you with us.
I'm now to meet a second challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? J. Thornburg, right, sir? Where are you from, Mr. Thornburg? Originally, I'm from Kansas. I'm currently living in the Washington, D.C. area. Living in Washington, D.C. Nice to have you with us. Mr. Thornburg, may I present our panel? Will you join me over here, please? You know how we keep score? Yes, I do. Fine. We'll let the audience here in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. We can tell you that Mr. Thornburg is salaried and deals in a product. And let's begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. Thornburg, is this a product that both men and women could use? <laughs> of course they could. They could. Well, now you're making it fairly obvious that uh, it's more likely that one or none of them use it? Uh, could uh, uh, something other than a human being profit by this product or benefit by it? I, I wouldn't uh, think so. I'd say no. no. One You're down and nine to go, crooks, Mr. Sir. That's what you are. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Thornburg, is the product that you deal in purchased ever by the United States government, one of yes. the departments? Yes. Would it be used by the Pentagon or the armed forces in any way? Yes. Is it uh, some kind of a destructive thing, something that could inflict damage on people? Yes. Uh, would it be in, have anything to do with nuclear, war, nuclear or jet propulsion warfare? That's a tough one, isn't it? Rocket. I think what we'd say, with your, with your permission, we'd say it benefited, uh, that it might be Bennett. Uh, you know, the question is general, so we'll give you a general answer. That when you say, could it have any association with uh, nuclear or jet uh, warfare? Rocket we'd have to say, in the same general sense, it could. Could this, in any sense, product be described as uh, an explosive or a fuel? Yes. Is it an explosive? Yes. Uh, well, is it, uh, has it something to do, therefore, with atomic warfare? No. No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Very good, Bennett. Doesn't have anything to do with atomic warfare. Well, is it a powder? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Gable. Does have something to do with conventional weapons? Uh, yes, it can. Uh, well, let's try to narrow that. Has it anything to do with, say, uh, the tank? No. Four down and six to go. Let me have a small conference on that. We leave you a no on that. Uh, I hope you don't object later, later Martin. But I don't I'll think it has a specific no. relationship to a tank. Ms. Kilgallen? Uh, Mr. Thornburg, does it have any relationship to the gun? To the witch? To the gun. gun. You know, bang, bang. At <laughs> <laughs> the horse. <laughs> no. Five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Thornberry, does your product have anything to do with the detonating of, uh, of a rocket or a jet? Would it be used at the moment that one of these infernal machines is put into motion? Yes. Dorothy says she knows what it is. But I can't think of it. It's, it's liquid something or other. Is it some liquid, kind of a liquid? Liquid oxygen? Is it, or yes. Liquid oxygen, isn't it? No. Excuse me for being out no, of No, well, I will liquid flip a couple something. of cards on that because yeah. we're having a lot of guesses here. <laughs> <laughs> Bennett, you haven't asked the question yet. No. Uh, is it high octane? No. no. But, uh, it's more expensive than Eight that and two to go. You ought to have this, by now, Miss Francis. But it is liquid. Yes. Is it delicious? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't it's detonate. Different the rule. flavors too. <laughs> is it? Uh, is it a liquid fuel? Yes, it is considered a fuel. It can be used as a fuel, but it's also already been elicited. It's an explosive. Now you're dancing all around the rim. Does it? Does it get the uh, the uh, things into orbit? 
All Did by you itself? blast off with it? All by itself? No. 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 Dynamite. No, but not it, dynamite. It has a relation. When I, I've got to give another TNT. tip. You yeah. want to try, Martin? Well, I can only... Most of my education, John, has been for the theater and literary matter. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, we're down to a propulsive liquid. I think that's as close or as explosive. any... Or explosive. Or explosive, yeah. TNT. I know the guy who makes this stuff. I can't think of it. <laughs> where, where, where? You know the guy that makes it. I'm going to take you out of your agony. If it's not dynamite, what's it got to be? TNT. Nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin. I thought they had me. I thought they did too, Jay, but we, I thought that Jay was out of luck. Uh, Jay is a chemical engineer and he's with the Naval Propellant. Naval Propellant Plant. Plant. At Indian Head, Maryland. Indian Head, Maryland. And uh, he's got a great job. He makes nitroglycerin. And how much do you make of this? I'm afraid I can't say. It's not, it's not a, that's not that's no, good. No. Well, let's say he makes a good big bungle of it every once I in a while. I thought that was already outmoded, that there was a more more uh, more concentrated and more more uh, effective fuel. And well, most of your solid propellants right now have nitroglycerin in, in, in them. them as one it's of the a, component parts. It's an parts. ingredient factor, which yeah, is why we had ingredient. to say all by itself it doesn't do it. John, I think the essentially peaceful nature of this panel is established <laughs> by our inability to think of the word nitroglycerin, don't you? I would say uh, Martin should have been a lawyer, Jay. I don't know what you think. <laughs> think uh, there's a man who can turn aside, can it? Nice to have you with us. Hope you enjoyed your visit. Thank you. Good to see you. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, and the panel, of course, is blindfolded for this part of the program. Blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, yes, yes sir. John. Good. Would you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? panel, a different form of questioning, one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise, and we'll begin with um, Bennett, sir. Well, that kind of a reception is usually accorded to somebody who is a familiar figure in the highways and byways of Hollywood. Uh, are you a familiar figure in those parts? I've been around there, not Route 66, though. You're talking <laughs> about highways. <laughs> the I... answer is yes, Bennett. <laughs> Miss Francis? But not on Route 66, did he say? He said or, not Route 66. Oh. Or in car 54? Uh, <laughs> are you best known for your work in the pictures rather than theater? Oh, I would. I'd go along with that, yes. Mr. Gable? Have you a picture about to open in New York? Unfortunately, no. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, are you playing anywhere in New York, either in a nightclub or on the stage? Unfortunately, no again. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, would you be known as a comedy star rather than a star of serious films? Well, now I would be saying it all depends on what goes under the head in a comedy. <laughs> That's a hedging the answer. answer. <laughs> the answer would have to be no. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Sounds as though he'd been with the Abbey players. Uh, are you a, are you a leading man? Well, no. More or less, I would say. At the present, misleading, but uh, certainly a leading man otherwise. Present, misleading. Gable? That's who it is. That's who it is. You say it. Are you Walter Pidgeon? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Senator Pigeon. I knew perfectly well. Everybody else stumps you. I'd come along here and make a fool of myself. <laughs> well, Marty, you, didn't. you didn't tell us the truth. You're, you're playing an advice and consent, aren't oh, you? Oh, no. Yeah, that's not what the question was. No. Have I a picture opening? That's right. And the it's second question open. was, are you now playing in a club or on the stage and not in a movie? So we. But he is uh, playing on the stage. Not, not, not in New York. New York. Oh, out in the paper mill. You're a tricky mill, huh? pair. You, you know, two. John, there is 
from one pear-shaped tone to another, I suddenly heard that round curve <laughs> at the end of a sentence. And that's what... Well, I was but... surprised that you could get your voice as much out of range as you did. I, I thought it was very well. Well, I don't know how long it had gone, though. That's the <laughs> But, well, Walter, uh... aren't you playing in The Complacent Lover next week someplace? Up at your way, you've just been. Up where you've been. Mineola, yeah. yes. Mineola. Yeah. I'm Robert the complacent Scott. husband, or not the complacent lover. <laughs> no matter what the role is, you'll be smashing. <laughs> I'll be complacent anyway. Anytime you play the complacent husband, it is also the complacent lover. Ah. That's what I think of you. And he's the best majority leader in the Senate in a long time. Robert, thanks for coming to see us. After this word from our alternate sponsor. Now to meet a final contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Anne Williams, right? Yes. And where are you from? Houston, Texas. Miss Williams, may I present our panel? Where's Miss Williams? Houston, Texas. So now would you join me here? Do you know how we keep score? Yes. Fine, then we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel. Now, this is a bit on the tricky side. We will warn you ahead of time. We will tell you that Miss Williams is self-employed and deals in a service. And let's begin with Arlene Francis. Uh, Miss Williams, is there something energetic about what you do? Yes. Uh, do you do it out of doors? Sometimes. Uh, would it be something that people might watch? Yes. Uh, is it done on or near the water? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Gable. You need special training for this athletic feat that you do? Yes. Is it uh, something that a lot of people do more or less well? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, do you move your feet in your work? Yes. More than the average person, I mean, walking around an office. Yes. Uh, could you perform in a theater or tent? Uh, sometimes. Uh, is uh, it something other than dancing that you do? Yes. Uh, is it some form of acrobatics? No. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Miss, Miss Williams, might you do this work in a sideshow of a circus or at a carnival? No. I would say this with your permission. It could be done in these areas. Um, I think Miss Wilson Williams does not do it, but it could be done at Bennett's. Miss Williams, do you, do you perform solo rather than as a member of a team? Yes. Uh, do you ever go up above the ground in the act that you do? No. No, that makes it four down and six to go. I Ms. Williams? Time for about two questions. Miss Williams, is there an animal that appears with you? Yes. Is it a horse? No. Five oh, down dear. and five to go, Mr. Gable. Is it a monkey? No. Six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it a bunch of wild animals? Are no. you a wild animal trainer? Not a wild animal trainer. Miss no. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Serv. Is it either an alligator or a seal? No. no but you would have got it. Is it a large? Is it a large animal? Very. Elephant? Elephant trainer. <laughs> and presently, I'm sorry we ran out of time. Presently out of Freedom Land, so that those of us in this area can oh. see this lovely gal do this, this uh, great work, John? training animals. Uh, Thank you very much. Nice to have you with us. <laughs> I'm afraid I've used up all the time, so with the permission of the panel, I will say good night for everybody and thank you for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Cotton. This is Johnny Olson speaking.